Blueberries for Sal by Robert McClowski. One day, little Sal went with her mother to Blueberry Hill to pick blueberries. Little Sal brought along her small tin pail and her mother brought along her large tin pail to put berries in. We'll take our berries home and we can can them, said her mother. Then we will have food for the winter. Little Sal picked three berries and dropped them in her little pail. Kaplunk, kaplunk, kaplunk. She picked three more berries and she ate them. Then she picked more berries and dropped one in the pail. Kaplunk, and the rest she ate. Then little Sal ate all four blueberries out of her pail. Her mother walked slowly through the bushes, picking blueberries as she went and putting them into her pail. Little Sal struggled along behind, picking blueberries and eating every single one. Little Sal hurried ahead and dropped a blueberry in her mother's pail. It didn't sound kaplunk because the bottom of the pail was already covered with blueberries. She reached down inside just to get her berry back. Though she really didn't mean to, she pulled out a large handful because there were so many blueberries right up close to the one that she had put in. Her mother stopped picking and said, Now, Sal, you go run along and pick your own berries. Mother wants to take her berries home and can them for next winter. Her mother went back to her picking, but little Sal, because her feet were tired of standing and walking, sat in the middle of a large clump of bushes and ate blueberries. On the other side of Blueberry Hill, Little Bear came with his mother to eat blueberries too. Little Bear, she said, eat lots of berries and grow big and fat. We must store up food for our long, cold winter. Little Bear followed behind his mother as she walked slowly through the bushes eating berries. Little Bear stopped now and then to eat berries as well. Then he had to hustle along to catch up. Because his feet were tired of hustling, he picked out a large clump of bushes and sat down right in the middle and ate blueberries. Over on the other side of the hill, little Sal ate all the blueberries she could reach from where she was sitting. Then she started out to find her mother. She heard a noise from around a rock and she thought, that's my mother walking along. But it was a mother crow and her children, and they stopped eating berries and they flew away, saying, caw, caw, caw. Then she heard another noise in the bushes and she thought, oh, surely that is my mother and I will go that way. But it was little bear's mother instead. She was trampling along, eating berries and thinking about storing up food for the winter. Little Sal tramped right along behind. By this time, Little Bear had eaten all the berries he could reach without moving from his clump of bushes. Then he hustled off to catch up with his mother. He hunted and hunted, but his mother was nowhere to be seen. He heard a noise from over a stump, and he thought, Oh, that must be my mother walking along. But it was a mother partridge and her children. They stopped eating berries and they hurried away. Then he heard a noise in the bushes and thought, Ah, oh, that is surely my mother. Oh, I will hustle that way. But it was little Sal's mother instead. She was walking along and picking berries and thinking about canning them for next winter. Little Bear hustled along right behind. Little Bear and Little Sal's mother and Little Sal and Little Bear's mother were all mixed up with each other among the blueberries on Blueberry Hill. Little Bear's mother heard Sal walking along behind and thought it was Little Bear. And she said, Little Bear, eat all you can, can possibly hold. Little Sal said nothing. She picked three berries and dropped them Kaplunk, 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 into her small pail. Little Bear's mother turned around to see what on earth could make a noise like kerplunk. Whoa, she cried, choking on a mouthful of berries. But that's not my child. 
Where's my little bear? She took one good look and backed away. She was old enough to be shy of people, even a very small person like little Sal. Then she turned around and walked off very fast to go hunt for little bear. Little Sal's mother heard little bear trampling along behind and thought it was little Sal. She kept right on picking and thinking about canning blueberries for next winter. Little bear patted and peeked into her pail. Of course, he only wanted a taste, just a few of what was inside. But there were so many and they were so close together that he tasted a tremendous mouthful by mistake. Now, Sal, said little Sal's mother without turning around, you run along and pick your own berries. Mother wants to can these for next winter. Little Bear tasted another tremendous mouthful and almost spilled the entire pail of blueberries. Little Sal's mother turned around and gasped. Oh, my goodness, you are not my little Sal. Oh, where, where is my child? Little Bear just sat munching and swallowing and licking his lips. Little Sal's mother slowly backed away. She was old enough to be shy of bears, even very small bears like Little Bear. Then she turned and walked away quickly to go look for Sal. She hadn't gone very far before she heard kaplink, kaplunk, kaplink. And she knew just what made that kind of noise. And Little Bear's mother had not hunted very long before she heard hustling sound that stopped now and then to munch and swallow. She knew exactly what made that kind of noise. Little Bear and his mother went home down one side of Blueberry Hill, eating blueberries all the way and very full and stored up for next winter. And Little Sal and her mother went down the other side of Blueberry Hill, picking berries all the way and drove home with food to can for next winter and a whole pail of blueberries and three more besides. The end.